Hello everyone. I will provide information to help to improve your brain. Please do not forget to subscribe to our channel. When the novel coronavirus began spreading in the United States, many people thought that it was yet another virus that would mostly claim the lives of the elderly. That's what early data from China suggested, people over the age of 60 and those with serious underlying health conditions were more likely to die. The earliest spate of deaths in the U.S. occurred in a nursing home outside of Seattle, Washington, where 35 out of 129 people there have succumbed to the disease. For a while, there was the sentiment that, if you're less than 60 years of age, you're safe. Don't worry about it, says Raj Parikh, MD, a pulmonary fellow at Boston University Medical. But now, as the US is becoming one of the countries that's hardest hit and more data comes in, it's becoming clearer, COVID is not sparing you depending on your age, Parikh says. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention CDC, recently came out with an analysis that showed that while fatality due to the coronavirus is highest in the elderly, millennials are not invincible. And new data shows that so far about a fifth of people who need hospitalization in the U.S. due to the coronavirus are between 20 to 44 years old. The rise in hospitalization among young people has raised the question of what other risk factors might lead to severe disease. Among some of these culprits may be obesity, asthma, and perhaps, vaping. Data from China showed that men are more likely to get severe COVID-19 symptoms than women, perhaps owing to the fact that they are heavier smokers. Vaping and smoking share a lot of the same mechanisms of damage, says Amit Gaga, MD, PhD, a pulmonologist and critical care doctor at the University of Alabama in Birmingham. This could lead to a widespread increase in infection and lung damage. There's not enough data yet, but there's good plausible reasoning that vaping could be a potential primer to lung injury, he says. People with the coronavirus often end up in the intensive care unit ICU, because they have what pulmonologists call acute lung injury. This happens when there is so much damage to the lungs that people need help breathing, and are then put on a ventilator. They often have one insult that tips them over, but oftentimes they have underlying conditions that lead them to developing acute lung injury, says Matthew Madison, PhD, a postdoctoral fellow in Gaga's laboratory. Interestingly, lung injury from e-cigarettes, referred to as e-cigarette or vaping product use associated lung injury, EVALI, looks similar to the acute lung injury that people with the coronavirus may experience. We are strongly urging those to stop vaping, now, more than ever. Much of what's known about the impact of vaping on lung health has been studied in human cells or animal studies. So far, researchers have found that the vapor in e-cigarettes disrupts the ability of cells that line the lung and cilia, hair-like protrusions, to move microbes and viruses up and out of the lungs. One study, published last fall in the Journal of Clinical Investigation, looked at the impacts of e-liquids in mice. When mice were exposed to e-cigarette vapors that didn't contain nicotine, which were thought to be relatively benign, for three months, their lung function was disrupted and immune response dampened. Though the mice still appeared healthy, once the researchers infected them with the flu, the mice that were exposed to e-cigarette vapor versus ambient air were more likely to succumb to infection by the virus. It's likely that the coronavirus might do something similar, says Farah Keradmond, MD, a professor of medicine at Baylor College of Medicine in Houston, Texas, and the senior author on the JCI paper. We don't know if coronavirus would do the same thing, but it's plausible. Taking patients' histories of tobacco and e-cigarette use and analyzing it once the dust settles could lead to some insights on how vaping might predispose people to more severe disease or for the coronavirus, says Keradmond. But taking that history has an inherent set of challenges. In the clinic, nurses and frontline doctors who intake people as they come into the emergency room are the ones who would be collecting data on tobacco use. Medical workers more typically ask about cigarette use than vaping. If you're not asking the question of e-cigarette use or vaping, that's already a problem, says Gaga. The data on vaping might also be more nuanced and difficult to collect, which ultimately makes it more challenging to analyze. For instance, there are different brands and flavors, which may contain different vaping fluids and amounts of nicotine. Are the people in the emergency room vaping nicotine or THC? Some people who vape might also use conventional cigarettes, further obfuscating that data. 
Also, if people need to be taken to the ICU immediately, it won't be possible to get this information when they are admitted. Gaga also notes that some people might not be as forthcoming in reporting their vaping habits. People often don't want to report it, because they don't consider it to be important. They might not recognize that some of their behavior might be causing underlying issues, he says. Vaping nicotine could make people more susceptible to infection with any virus, including the coronavirus, says David Cristiani, an epidemiologist at the Harvard T.H. Chan School of Public Health. Perhaps it, along with other underlying health conditions, such as diabetes, increases your chances of getting severe coronavirus. That severity is altered by how many and how bad your risk factors are. We just don't have data on that yet. Despite the lack of conclusive evidence, doctors are recommending that people who vape quit. We are strongly urging those to stop vaping, now, more than ever, given the concern that it would make them even more vulnerable to the respiratory effects of COVID-19, says Parikh.